got off of, I sent an email to, um, what is the guy who wrote the song about um, the boar? Um, Dean Clancy, is that his name? Anyway, I found his email. I wrote an email to him, right? Well, I accidentally emailed the wrong guy. And this just happened like 10 minutes ago. And it's like one letter off from the real guy that I was trying to email's email. And this guy turns out to be such a jerk and a douche. I mean, I had to tell him off, um, Texas style. But I'm still pissed off from that. So anyway, I didn't have my microphone on. My apologies. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I was speaking to Alice earlier and we were talking about this book coming out that John Bolton wrote. And there's a lot of controversy uh, surrounding it. You still can't hear me? Okay, hold on one second. Let me see what is going on. So let me know if you guys can hear me. Can hear now. Okay, great. So there's been a lot of um, controversy surrounding this book that John Bolton wrote. And really I don't care about any of it except for the fact um, of what he wrote about Good Morning Ben, about um, Donald Trump, where the white minority population in South Africa is concerned. And the reason this is important is because, you know, everybody's been wondering, you know, is it at the forefront of his mind? Um, is anything being thought about, being done? So, even though Vanity Fair wrote a really shitty article on this, um, it lets us know that it absolutely is at the forefront of his mind. So John Bolton says that, and he's not trying to compliment him, by the way, he says that um, he interrupted a meeting about Iran um, to speak about the white farmers in South Africa and how he wanted to give them citizenship and asylum. So, you know, I'm just thinking that in order for him to interrupt a White House meeting on issues with Iran, with his concerns for the white minority population in South Africa, it's absolutely at the forefront of his mind. And what I'm hoping this means is that in his second term, you know, something more will be done. Yeah, I see my frames are dropping, guys. I'm sorry. It's my internet. Um, if it gets too bad, I will just delete this video and post the recording because it records at the same time. So just bear with me. Um, anyway, I'm going to read to you quickly what Vanity Fair wrote. They are fake news and disgraceful and despicable, by the way. So Vanity Fair says another passage speaking of John Bolton's book, shows Trump's racist views on immigration. Bolton describes how Trump derailed a White House meeting about Iran's strategy by bringing up a right-wing conspiracy that black South Africans were killing white South African farmers and stealing their land. According to Bolton, Trump blurted out that he wanted to grant the white South Africans asylum and citizenship. So, Vanity Fair is crap and no one should ever read it. Um, I think a lot of people let them have it on Twitter today um, with images and information, but as I said, the important thing about this is at least we know that it is, you know, on people's mind, especially, I mean, his. 
Um, hey, Elaine. Okay, I hope the video is not too bad, guys. As I said, if it gets too bad, I'll just post the recording. Anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you know, I've said quite often that he will not say anything else about this when people ask, you know, why he tweeted but hasn't said anything further. Um, he will never say anything further. There will either be action or there won't. Um, and, you know, of course, it's because of the attacks and, you know, you don't let your enemy know what your plans are before you put those plans into place, typically. Yeah, I will do that. I thought you didn't have Telegram anymore. Uh, my video, guys, it's doing not good. Um, I just also read a farm murder story that someone sent me. We don't know that. We don't know that he won't do anything. Um, you know, there are things that, a lot of things that I don't like that he's doing or not doing but I refuse to be negative about this, you know. Um, number one, we're talking about people that have lost hope for the most part. And to say he will do nothing when he's already done something really amazing that I consider almost a miracle. You know, I've waited more than 13 years for someone in a position of power to make this an issue for the rest of the world. And because of one tweet by Donald Trump, no matter what you think of him, no matter what I think of him, this is now one of the top five hot button issues in the world. He opened a huge door for people to make a difference if you were smart enough to realize that and I think he knew what he was doing so I refuse to take hope from the already hopeless by you know being negative especially about this situation if he didn't care about it he wouldn't speak on it or interrupt a meeting he wouldn't have made the tweet in the first place knowing the attacks he would come under so I don't believe that and we're just going to have to see what plays out, you know? If he doesn't, he doesn't. Um, but I refuse to believe that he will just do nothing just because whatever the reason is. There's more evidence pointing to that he will do something than there is that he won't. The evidence just points to that he will not do it in his first term. Um, if help comes, it will come in the second term. So hopefully uh, something does give and some kind of help does come, you know. I believe in the words of Senior Van Rensburg and he his prophecies say that America does come to aid the Boer you know, as well as Germany. So, you know, I don't have it all figured out, as I'm sure no one else does either. But I do know of many things happening behind the scenes, some things that I can't even speak of being done to fight for these people. Um, you know, I don't openly speak about everything that I do or that I know is being done by others because I cannot. But please believe me when I say that there are people fighting all over the world in ways that people will never know until they see the results.
you're right, he's the only one who's ever said one word. No, Elaine, I have not seen the trailer. And I won't see it. I don't, I boycott these crap. Um, I, I really don't even watch TV hardly ever. I don't support anything that has to do with Hollywood. I do not support anything like Nike, Starbucks. I'm very conscious of products that I purchase who the makers of these support where they come from. Um, and I don't buy things made by people who hate my guts. And I never will. I don't support Hollywood. I very rarely ever watch a movie. Um, I do like Clint Eastwood. And I just, I don't believe in giving money, even if it's a small amount, to support things that are in I mean, polar opposite of my beliefs or people that hate me. Yeah, YouTube's getting pretty, pretty bad. Um, I try to post everything on BitChute, but I think I've told you guys before, I get so much abuse there. It's just ridiculous. No way, they, they, I didn't know they canceled Colin Flaherty. I haven't really had time to watch lately. I'm sure he's up on BitChute or somewhere. Right, so Trump has interest in South Africa, especially because China has interest. I would say interest is an understatement when it comes to China. Um, you know, China is doing a whole entire takeover of South Africa. And I would like to remind people who don't care about this or think that Trump doesn't care about this. Um, China already owns 80% of the world's precious metals. Uh, why do you think they're in South Africa for people who don't know? They're there for the minerals. Um, they're also buying up cheap farmland. Why? Because it's rich in minerals. Um, the U.S., in order to operate our weapon systems, if we were to go to war, we need precious metals. That is what operates our weapon systems, right? So if China owns all of the world's precious metals, we are screwed if we have to go to war. Um, so yeah, we better have an interest in what they're doing in South Africa because you know, they're not our friend. I've said this many times. They are our enemy. We need to put a full trade embargo on China and let their economy tank. Um, and nothing will make me change my mind on that. China wants all the sea routes around Africa and the minerals. That's right. You control the minerals. You control everything. You control the trade routes. You control everything. <laughs> Elaine, you're cracking me up. I'm on Parlor, guys, at my old Twitter name, uh, Barbie the Brain. And that's just a stupid name because of idiots calling me Barbie. So... I always made Twitter names, um, mocking them, like with Becky or, you know, something smart ass like that. Hey, good morning. Mirror channels on YouTube that get deleted. You mean like people's backup channels? Yeah, defund China. If America put a full trade embargo on China, they're um, economy would tank in it one day. Uh, 
Undeniable Truth post Colin Flaherty's stuff. Cool, I'll go check it out. Right, so Donald Robertson says we need an alternative media that would support an alternative culture. So this kind of reminds me of Breitbart's um, vision of citizen journalist, you know, were it not for Andrew Breitbart and the movement that he created, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Um, it was Andrew Breitbart and Donald Trump's tweet that gave me my light bulb moment that I needed to begin speaking out. And, you know, even though I'm not great at it, I'm not a professional, you know, I speak from the heart and I do the best that I can to get the information out. And that was Andrew Breitbart's whole um, movement was when the media refuses to report on things or refuses to report honestly, we must become citizen journalists and report on it ourselves. If we say it enough times, people will begin to hear us. And I can vouch for that. I never knew that I would have a YouTube channel or that anyone would ever listen. Um, I had no idea. Yeah, nowadays, yeah, Breitbart has changed a lot. Breitbart News. Um, thank you, Rich. But there are a lot of people that do not. Um, a lot of people I have never done anything to, but they do not like the truth being spoken, especially when you speak it about them. Yeah, no one is safe. Um, it was funny because I was looking up everyone that I used to follow that used to follow me on Twitter. Well, not everyone because it's... 30,000 people, but certain people I wanted to follow, and all the accounts are gone. It's it's like, they just, eventually, anyone who is conservative and speaking on conservative issues, um, the attempts to take them down are crazy, but something great has happened. So Trump has taken away their protection, um, their government protection from being sued. This is something I'm very happy with, being that Twitter not only has um, suspended my accounts and discriminated against me, but they've also ripped me off for money as well. I won um, a complaint with the Better Business Bureau against them because they ripped me off for a hundred dollars. So I paid a hundred dollars to promote two tweets about South Africa. So Twitter ads is supposed to promote your tweet and gain you followers and gain attention to your tweets. Instead of that, the very next day I was locked out of my Twitter account for two weeks. Um, it continued to tell me to verify my phone number, yet Twitter would never send the text message for me to verify. In two weeks, instead of gaining attention to my tweets and gaining followers, I had lost 1,800 followers. So anyway, I followed on them with the Better Business Bureau, which is, you know, small, but it's something, especially if I sue their ass. It's not a lot of money, but it is the principle. Um, you know, they discriminate against conservatives regularly. I mean, it's it's gross discrimination. It is, I mean, I once said abortion is murder and was suspended from Twitter. I mean, come on. But other people can say kill all whites and um, threaten to rape you know, conservative women, and which I've had done to me, um, and say all kinds of things, and no big deal. The not-so-ignorant 
are you the same the not so ignorant from Twitter because I remember you and I don't want to say too much but I am going it might interest you I will be going uh, sometime next week on a very well known show um, in America but that reaches many South Africans and Americans um, on some of the issues that you faced, I faced, and many others, and we'll be exposing these things and these people and what is all behind this because I've been working very hard digging up a lot of information so I will announce it when I can give you all the information but I'm sure you will like it um, I've had to make a list of people uh, you are one of the people on there the not so ignorant and some screenshots of attacks on you are in the evidence and the um, annexures. So, as I said, I will announce later on. A uh, white future. It's complicated. Technically, yes. Um, but my friend, Alice, at I am Alice VL, um, she has two Twitter accounts, so you can find me at her Twitter account at I am Alice VL. Do I have a Samsung washing machine? Did you just hear it go off? That was a dryer, actually. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, guys, this asshole that emailed me back. I wanted to throttle him oh my god I let him have it so you guys have heard the guy singing the song it ain't easy to kill a boar um, I emailed him because everyone keeps sending me the video asking me to interview him and I accidentally emailed the wrong guy right it's one letter off this guy emailed me back and he was trying to be a smart ass, but he's not very smart. And I told him he wasn't very smart. But, um, oh my gosh, he's such an asshole. Just, I, I told him he was an asshole, too. This is a democracy. If the majority is against legalized abortion on demand, and so be it. Well, apparently Twitter thinks that they decide if abortion is murder or not and they do not agree with me because um, <laughs> okay so hopefully this taking away of their exemption by government will alleviate some of these problems or at least alleviate some of the money in their pockets because these people, this is the only thing they understand, is when you hit them in the pocketbook. So Facebook, Twitter, Google, none of them are going to stop what they're doing unless some of their money and their power is taken away. And quite frankly, it is terrifying how much power these huge social media conglomerates and, you know, um, places like Google have. I mean, they literally have the power to sway um, a presidential election. No company was supposed to ever have that much power in America. You know, this is why we have laws in place. We have the Constitution. They should not hold the power that they hold. Yeah, meat is murder, but abortion isn't. Yeah, so people value dogs' lives and march for dogs being killed and eaten in China. Nothing against dogs, but 
um, they don't value a human life, a fetus, a baby with a beating heart, you know, this is crazy. Actually a republic on paper, true. No Morrissey quotes, please and thank you. Yeah, abortion, another legislation from the bench, right, which, you know, th this wasn't meant to be. They weren't meant to make legislature from the bench. You know, this is what we have people to vote on this for, not so judges can decide what all Americans, you know, get to do. Or, you know, this is not the way things are supposed to go. Right, so to Twitter, this is an oligarchy, and they are the oligarchs. That is true. Yes, bacteria on, life, on Mars is life, but a baby growing in the womb is not. Pretty ridiculous and insane. We need to become a less democratic republic to get our country back. Yes, we need less government. Listen, I'm ready to secede. I'm a Texan. I've been ready to secede for a long time. Um, do I think anyone will bring this forward? No. Do we have the right? Yes. Can we sustain ourselves? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we created this monster, and we are the only ones who can fix it. But I worry that most people are too cowardly to stand up and even try. Most, the majority of people would rather be accepted by the masses and say things that they know are not true or go along with things that they know are not right than to be rejected and stand alone. And this is a very sad thing. You know, if if I wanted to be popular, I could talk about anything else, in, literally anything, um, on social media or on YouTube, and, you know, be hugely popular for talking about nothing. But when you talk about the truth, when... You talk about real issues affecting people's lives, such as race or, you know, things being done to one race by the other. You're hated, especially when you speak about South Africa. This is probably the number one thing on earth that you can speak about that makes you one of the most hated people on the internet. Obstetricians are clumps of cells. Hey, my, my obstetrician, I, I like him. Yeah, every time you go to Twitter, you get filled with rage. I try not to look at the things that fill me with rage. Twitter does make me psycho. It's why I've been kicked off at least um, 20 times. The gutter of the internet it is but reaching people is necessary you know guys I didn't have any social media before I began speaking out on this issue um, I don't like social media this issue is the only reason that I'm on any platform I'm not positive on the DACA thing, so I'm not even going to comment on it. So, Donald Robertson says, Lincoln proved that we don't have the right to secede. So, in part, I, I agree with you, right? We do have the right to secede. If people were actually willing 
it, it depends on how bad you want it, right? No one wants us to secede, right? Because Texas is a very important state. But if people were willing to go to war and die for it, yeah, we absolutely could secede. Rich D, you are absolutely right. So minorities are allowed to loot, riot. The media calls it peaceful protest. I spoke uh, a few days ago on what happens to white people when they actually peacefully protest. They are murdered um, by FBI. Um, they are painted as terrorists and worse by the news media. Um, but that doesn't mean we just lay down and take it, guys. We continue to fight. Continue to fight back. You know, stop caring what they call you. Um, stop caring about hurting people's feelings. And just try to be a decent person and speak the truth. It's what I try to do every day. I don't try to speak hate. I try to be a good person and speak the truth. No more and no less. A civil war would be too horrific, but the way things are going in our country, what other option will there be? Because by the time we decide that that's what it's going to take, we're going to be in the same shape as South Africa, or something very close to it. So, you know, I know a lot of people say that war should be the last option. Civil war, there shouldn't be a war. I'm sorry, but I'm in disagreement with that. Because if we do not decide now to stop taking it, our children are going to be much worse off than we are today. I mean, they may not even have a future if we don't start now. As long as we have freedom of speech, we should fight nonviolently. I agree, but technically, we don't even really have freedom of speech anymore. Um, Everything we, we say is censored. We're discriminated against grossly on all social media platforms. Um, you know, the media won't report honestly. We're demonized as the perpetrators when we are actually the victims. So if you just look a little closer, it's, it's all evaporating before our eyes. It's been coming for a long time. Right, South Africa was the social laboratory for the NWO, how to extinguish the middle class and assign everyone to either poverty or the elite class. So South Africa was the canary in the coal mine. We see how that turned out. And it's this is literally at our doorstep. And people have ignored it for so long or thought, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. We're just going to be polite and kind. Well, screw that. I'm done with that. So Donald says, I'm from Texas, too. My ancestors have been here since at least the post-reconstruction years. You know what? I am a native Texan. My family has been here for generation upon generation upon generation. My ancestors have fought in every war that we've ever had. Um, I'm a very proud Texan. And to see patriots have to stand in front of the Alamo so that Black Lives Matter protesters could not destroy it is one of the most horrifying and beautiful things I've seen 
both at the same time. Beautiful because brave people were there protecting our history. Horrifying because, you know, those 200 men that died at the Alamo, that looked out at certain death, you know, at 5,000 of Santa Ana soldiers, they had two choices to make. They could have waved a white flag and surrendered, or they could fight. And they knew help wasn't coming. They knew help would never arrive in time. And they passed around the whiskey, and they taunted the Mexican soldiers, and they fought. And when Santa Ana soldiers breached the Alamo and shot the doors off with cannon and dragged out the bodies and you know these 200 Texans the one that the ones that were left fought hand-to-hand -hand combat with these soldiers and they died just like they knew they were going to they weren't even granted a proper burial they were dragged out and stacked into three pyres and lit on fire their bones and ashes still visible when Sam Houston did arrive um, and had their remains entombed and buried. So I'm horrified that the very history of Texas and something that literally represents all Texans is that people want to destroy that I mean I feel like I am living in the twilight zone and I get very emotional about this you know the Alamo guys is something that um, makes especially Texans have a lot in common with the Boer. Um, there are so many things that are so much like the battles and things that they have been through that relate to the Alamo. And I find that I feel like I have more in common with them than half of America. The government does not censor our speech, right? The government also doesn't stop Black Lives Matter and Antifa from burning down police stations and taking over city blocks and assaulting um, old white ladies and dragging them out of their cars and beating them and beating mentally challenged um, young people and uh, anything else they want to do moot point and yeah if we go to jail for fighting back that is the government censoring us it absolutely is it just happens a little at a time it doesn't happen overnight it happens a little at a time so where are we now compared to 10 years ago? Just like where is South Africa now compared to 26 years ago? Oh, Donald, you're getting on my nerves with this shit. Um, no native Texan would speak the way that you are speaking um, who has any pride or respect for the history of this state once nation so I don't know if there's a moderator but if there is please get him the fuck out of my chat hey video bore two death threats from a post I did yesterday on Twitter going to 
Good. I hope you do file a police report. I saw something else that I asked why no one had um, filed a police report on it. Um, you guys absolutely need to start filing police reports every single time they do this to you. Every time. Anyways, guys, listen, I'm just very frustrated and thank you for coming in. I'm going to stop here. Um, I will speak to you again soon and uh, not so ignorant. Be paying attention because uh, I have something coming up that you are going to really enjoy. A lot of people in South Africa are. So thank you very much, guys, and uh, I will speak to you soon.